What internet marketing expert should you spend your valuable time listening to? Listen to someone who has over 20 years of web marketing experience and hundreds of website marketing success stories. That man is Aaron Sparks from Site Strategics. And this is Edge of the Web Radio. All righty. Uh, Neil Patel. Uh, Neil, P- Neil Patel dot com is a great website. The guy's incredible in uh, he really un- is in un- understanding uh, not only the mechanics and the science behind like SEO or social media, but but it's it's the gestalt. He knows he understands the user experience yeah. and and uh, to really start off our our uh, 2016 uh, year when we're breaking our show down. Uh, across the year in uh, major components that you can use. So every four weeks, uh, you know, all, you know, every month, we are focusing on a particular theme. We're really focused on web conversions and web design on in, in this month, and how to how to increase the the best value out of your uh, out of your web and web experience. And that's not only just your website; it's also your 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 social media branding that's out there. The visual components of your brand are, are what we're talking about. So. From Neil's, Neil's site, he had a great blog post. We wanted to pick it up uh, at the beginning of the year. You, know, you may think that your site offers useful useful information, right, and deserves to, to rank very high on Google. But the real question to ask yourselves is, what do your users think? Mm. <laughs> Sometimes you don't want to ask that question. My goodness. You know, user optimization refers to creating a memorable experience for your users. I mean, it's just the same as if you're a brick and mortar company and you're walking into uh, you know a piece of a uh, real estate right uh, you're walking in there uh, uh, in a retail experience uh, I mean this is the psycho- psychology that we talked about 50 year uh, 50 years ago or 65 years ago whenever they really talked about atmospherics and these architects yep. were tying into marketing firms and they were showing Hey, you need to align things. You need to make this experience. You just don't have uh, shelf after shelf. You need to really guide people in yep. and make a pleasant buying experience. And lo and behold, as soon as that took hold, sales go out the roof, right? Well, you need to read your... So if they if the users want to read their content and take the right actions, right, like subscribing to a list, you need to persuade them into, their, into that seat. So Neil actually came up with eight principles of user optimization that will help you, you improve your search rankings as well as your conversion rate uh, once you implement them on the website. So we're going to go through uh, a few of them here in this segment. One, number one, is optimizing your site to load faster. Now, check these stats out, guys. I mean, how do you feel when you visit a page that loads like an old snail crawling uphill, you know? You get frustrated. You're down. You're gone, right? Something like that. Very, very deep sigh. Someone, (laughs) I'm not going to talk about them, but my host migrated our site because they're having attacks yeah yeah and our site is loading at like one third the speed that it Mm. was before you know what i actually uh, ran a test on your site before we got on the show here and it's doing pretty good now uh, it's not as good as it was no all right all right i'm just saying but it but uh, well we we see it we see it huge yeah i i mean people pay attention to that just because google says hey we want you to have a fast site but the fact is that people want you to have a really fast site as well our mobile is a little bit slow too yeah we need to tweak that one yeah you know what we were actually running some tests here just recently on our site we're we're loading at 4.92 seconds you think that's pretty fast that's not yeah. And we actually need to jettison some of our own graphic baggage as well. I mean, nobody wants to wait for ages for a web page to load. You know, you hate slow loading slides. And, 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 and uh, you know, I'd rather sl- switch to a competitor site if the one that I visited is slow. So does your consumer. Time is money, and wasting it isn't the best way to build a successful online business. People expect sites to load in two seconds or less. Yep. Now, we're in the realm, the age of broadband. Okay, this is not two seconds on a 56k modem. <laughs> this is this is two seconds on mega fast speed. All right. Mm-hmm. So if you're not in a space where you've got caching, uh, on-site caching turned on, if you're if you're not in a web host environment that allows you to optimize your speed, you gotta get the heck out of Dodge. A survey of 148 online shoppers by Akamai and Gomez reveal, revealed that 47 percent of people expect a web page to load in two seconds or less, and 40 percent will abandon a web page if it takes more than 
three seconds to load. Boom. 40%. So you want to throw away 40% of the potential consumers to your business, which I <laughs> evidently well, we're doing like as well. Idea. <laughs> it's not a good <laughs> idea. Site load time is actually the first impression you create with your prospects and customers before anything else. I mean, they haven't read your content or visited your, your you know, what your about page is, so you, they can't hear your mission statement if they actually jump off the ship. All right. Uh, they, they don't know how yet valuable your insights are, but your site speed definitely creates an impression. So all things roughly being equal, sites that load within one to two seconds convert better than those taking five to se- uh, four to five seconds to load. Tagman actually conducted a test in partnership with Glasses Etailer, Glasses Direct, to study a site, site speed and conversion behavior. The test measured the impact of the average page load time on the user's likelihood to convert to a, uh, on, a, on a website. Not surprisingly, it found a huge correlation. At about two seconds, the conversion rate increased, dropping by 6 and 6.7% for each additional second. Hmm. Okay, you wow. start combining that, you know, and you're in a space. And uh, we'll throw a graphic on the on the on the video here, but we have got some conversion rate analysis from Neil's uh, uh, Neil's site, and the conversion rate is literally like a, like a hockey stick. Under if if you're past two two seconds, you're dropping down in, into into the realms of of less than a percentage conversion rate. It's crazy. So, I mean, the consequences of a one-second delay are huge, and if your site loads faster, you'll see a dramatic improvement in the user engagement, period, all right? Um, the, 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 the consequences of a one-second delay uh, from the study that they were referencing, uh, 11% uh, drop in fewer page views if you have a, if for each, every one-second delay, 16% in decreased, in, in decreased customer satisfaction, and 7% in lost conversions. All right. So Google also hates slow sites. When Google ranks slow sites above faster sites, it knows people will begin switching to other search engines. So optimizing users for users means that you put them first when designing your website. You know, Google Google rewards sites that actually perform well. If you want people to visit your site, refer to yeah, you know, refer to other people and purchase your products, you should optimize your page elements to load within 2 seconds. All right. Have I stressed that enough? I think so. <laughs> so, like, five seconds? No, actually two seconds. Oh. Though. Yep, two seconds. Okay. Um, so, some quick steps. To, you, know, you may be asking, how do I know how fast my page loads? Go ahead. Hey, um, so if I get it under five seconds, yep. what do I do? To, two seconds. Oh, to two, two seconds. seconds. How do I get it under two seconds? <laughs> All right, first step is go to... <laughs> nice. Appreciate that. <laughs> go to whichloadsfaster.com. All right, whichloadsfaster.com. It's a simple tool. It actually has an accuracy of, of 100 milliseconds. Go to there. Uh, they got a pop-up thing that you just go through. Um, second step is input your site on the left search box and your competitor's site on the right search box. I actually did that for your, for DK New Media, Doug. Did you? Yep. And you hit Ooh, go. Did yep. you compare us versus them? I did. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> well, they migrated that page, too, so... <laughs> Then you hit the go button. The third step is you compare load times. Doug, DK was six times faster than our site, guys. Wow. We got some work to do then. I'm I guess. thinking so. Oh, I'm feeling better now. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I didn't say marketing tech. Blog. Him first. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say marketing tech. Blog. Okay. So we'll just keep that in mind. Uh, second point is leverage. The con- uh, y- here's another point on on u- uh, improving the user experience. Uh, oh, there's another place uh, from the th- from the speed of the site. Go to pingdom.com. P i g d o m dot com. They got a they, they got a web test tool free of charge. So is that uh, so the other, so is the other website. Webmaster still has their yep. waterfall one too. Yep. as well. Mm, yeah, page insights or page speed yeah. insights. Or something the the only analytics. thing that I see with those is you gotta if you if you're good, right? I mean, yep. and you guys do this too. Is yep. Some of the elements are post-loaded, it's yep. called, mm-hmm. so that the page actually does tell Google, hey, the page is done loading, and then they'll load some more stuff, and that's right. a good thing. Yeah. And and a lot of those tools, like even ping them, it'll keep showing like the post-load stuff yep. and make you feel like, oh my God, our site's taking forever. Right. But really, a lot of that stuff is, hey, the page is done, 
but now it's going to go ahead and load this exactly. stuff. And that's, exactly. And that's okay. Um, you know what? What we're going to do here is uh, we're going to cover um, our content model here uh, here in a second. There's a number of things I want to go over regarding conversion rates and content. But uh, first, we're going to step off. Hey, we're covering the remainder of our user optimization points here. Uh, time to write them down and make sure that you're hitting all eight cylinders that we're talking about today on the edge. Welcome back. This is Edge of the Web Radio. Um, we're going to jump into these because I really want to hit uh, a couple of these key points here. Uh, first and foremost, uh, leveraging the convert model in your in your landing pages. Um, data from Steelhouse shows that conversion rates typically range from one to three percent. Okay, that means that ninety seven percent of your site's visitors aren't sufficiently interested in what you're offering. At least not yet. More than likely, your landing page it attracts visitors and prospects from different channels, and consequently, optimizing for those channels is important because the conversion rate by channels will actually differ. Okay, so according to Brian Eisenberg, if you haven't read uh, his books, it's there. He's a fantastic. He's, he's the he's the grandpa of, of persuasive marketing. He says most websites don't have a traffic problem. However, every pro every website has a conversion. Problem. Oh, I love that. That's a beautiful statement. Yeah. I mean, the conversion rate is is very simple to, to calculate. The total conversions are the number of people that did whatever you wanted that whatever you defined as a as a conversion conversion. So, email newsletter, made a purchase or whatever. Okay, to get your conversion rate, you simply divide the, the that that total number of conversions by the number of visitors to your website. So, so for example, the site with 5,000 visitors and there's 50 conversions has a conversion rate of one percent. All right, mm -hmm. there's that. So you got to know what your conversion rate is. You now, a visitor snapshot tells us that the bulk of our visitors are casual. So they got different steps in the process of awareness and understanding, right? And I'm not going to do this particular concept that much justice, but I do want to go through the customer buying process. There's a problem recognition level, right? There's an information search level. There's an evaluation of alternatives level. There's a purchase decision level. There's a purchase, and there's a post-purchase evaluation okay those are the different steps along this customer journey now it's not a linear thing either they can go back and forth between these different areas especially if they don't have their education right but your content can actually connect to each and every one of those different levels and they should because your 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 audience is going to be in the i mean nobody's at the same awareness level level at the same time you need to have different content that can be easily attained don't hide this stuff Based on the different buying personas and the, and the the level of awareness that they're at, and I'm I'm a preacher of this in the office on a regular basis is making sure that we're writing to the different buy awareness levels uh, for our cust for our clients customers right. So there's a number of different spaces along that from information search and evaluation of alternatives and purchase decisions. Deep dive into this concept because this is user optimization whenever you're dealing with your own website and your your marketing materials mm -hmm. is if you're not writing to any we've talked about this in in in, in so many times doug is 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 getting <laughs> he's literally training away from me as i'm talking to him <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a snooze button or a sneeze button i know it i know i got a mute button i'll mute yeah you. <laughs> um, but but making sure that your content's aligned with the different steps along a journey is one of the best things that you can do to connect to where your user is. Now, another point here real quick is creating a memorable content experience. All right, Content marketing drives user engagement. And if you're looking to engage users, focus on the content and the design of that content as well. You know, it's not enough just to write. You got to make it attractive. You know, uh, according to a demand gen report, 67% of B2B buyers rely more on content to do to research and make B2B pur purchasing decisions rather than they did a year ago. 60%, 67% more. Uh, not all content is created equal, and, and <clears throat> some content drives traffic, while other content is designed to generate leads. So spending enough time on your blog posts, the same as you should be actually focusing on static landing page copy, which will help infuse Ooh. your content with conversion triggers, right? Right. I mean, the point is, is that um, people scan. They don't read immediately. They scan visually on, on a site. And they, they ha the average human attention span is eight seconds. It was eight seconds in 2013. One second less than that of a goldfish, by the way. 
You know what? You know what I'll say to that though. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll say this: that 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 that's the average person, right? 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 This is. I always get upset with this because then people think I'm not paying attention. What? Exactly. <laughs> but people people think, oh, I've got to be more concise. I've got to write shorter content. I've got to write right. uh, less and less. I've got to have shorter videos. I've got to have no. Depends. Not, yeah. It totally depends. It yeah. maybe it's just that someone lands on your site and it's not what they wanted, right? And so they leave. Well, yeah. guess what? You weren't going to get them anyways. But someone who was interested mm-hmm. might watch the ten minute video, Absolutely. might download the ebook, might you know, might spend fifteen minutes on your site. And so I, I that, but there are some archetypal type of of. Reference points in design. Absolutely. That making, will grab a hold of something. Right. Making everything else. easily findable, and yeah. you talk about that here, is, is yeah. critical. But I don't want people to think that, oh, well, nobody, I, I just hate when everybody says, well, nobody pays attention anymore. No, you okay. think about your own activity. A lot of times you sure. get ingrained and read over and over, and you read these manuals and how to use these tools and everything else. You spend 20 minutes yeah. trying to figure things out. Yep. Yep. You're, you're, <laughs> no, it, it depends You're, on where you are exactly, in the awareness level. Exactly. All right. So uh, another, yeah, that's a very g- good key point. Another key point is A-B testing, user engagement. If you have the traffic to do so, you need to do split testing on different types of designs in your site. Uh, another point is focusing on the site objective and the calls to action. They're, they're intrin- intrinsically tied together. The, you know, your site objective is the goal you want to achieve and the call to action is how you achieve that objective and if you're not paying attention if you don't have literally have you need to set aside time just to write down your goal and objective and your call to actions if you haven't do that to your website right now six is stay true to your audience and the conversion will follow uh seven is aim for seamless keyword integration do not spam and eight, and and I tell you what, it's not not the least of this is building functional links to your websites from authoritative websites. That authority sculpting is essential for what we're doing in uh, digital marketing nowadays. So yep. there's your user experience optimization. We're going to be talking more about web design and and good practices as well as how to avoid failures this entire month. So check us out. On-